Hello everyone. I got this old John Deere L120 lawn tractor off Craigslist three years ago when I was in a bind. I had acres of grass to cut and I only had a push mower at the time. This thing had some significant problems but I got it for $300 so I figured it was worth the risk. I fixed a wiring problem with the PTO clutch, changed the plugs, oil and filters, and pushed some JB weld into a spot where oil was leaking past the sump gasket. Then this old workhorse saved the summer of 2019. But that makeshift leak repair failed at the beginning of the next season. The smoke screen it put up made it unusable so I parked it. I got my Craftsman tractor around the same time so the L120's been sitting for two years. It's about time to take care of that sump gasket replacement. So I've been putting this job off for a long time guys. This is a John Deere L120 lawn tractor. It has the Briggs & Stratton Intec V-Twin 20 horsepower engine. And as is pretty common with these, the sump gasket is leaking, which causes oil to drip onto the hot muffler and it puts up a nice cloud of smoke. So it's time to replace the sump gasket and the main crank seal. So I've never worked with one of these before, but there's more than one way to pop a belt off a PTO. The first thing I'm going to do is disconnect the fuel line from the engine, actually from this little fuel pump up here. Hold it up high so it doesn't leak. And then since this is quarter inch line, I'm going to use a quarter inch drill bit as a plug. That should help keep it from leaking if this thing drops down. Normally the first thing you would want to do is disconnect the battery. This battery has a, a battery disconnect on it. It was that way when I bought it. So that's convenient. All right, take the cable off the starter. I have a ground down 7 16 open end. Ground it down to make it narrow so it could fit into tight spaces like this. This is a 3 8 inch bolt head.
It's like a missing one right here. There's four of these. They just hold this plastic screen on top. Man, that looks clean. Well, I did service it couple of years ago before I put it up and I was getting it ready to run for the season we had all this smoke coming out of it so we didn't use it that season or last season oh well, you know that's what was holding this cover on yeah I'll have to take that connector apart This comes out along with the engine. Now for the throttle cable and the choke cable, those levers are pulled all the way back. So these cables are extended all the way. I'll put these back where they belong just so I don't lose them. Okay, the PTO clutch bolt on the output shaft under the engine needs to be removed. When I try to turn it, the crankshaft is going to turn. So I need the flywheel held. With a screwdriver tip, very firmly, just push it right in there, and then you can see the engine won't turn. So just hold it in nice and tight here. Put a little bit of weight behind it just to make sure you're solid. And I'll go down below and loosen up that uh, PTO clutch bolt. Okay, here we go. This 
smack the camera. Ah. Okay, so I've gone ahead and removed this PTO bolt. This holds the PTO clutch to the motor shaft. And the PTO clutch just basically fell off the end of the shaft. There's no friction holding it up there at all. It just came right out. And I had to pull these two electrical connections just a negative and a positive and uh, the clutch is now completely free all right there's four bolts under here I hold the engine down I tried to wipe them off so there's one there's the other Those are on the back. Then toward the front, there's one. And can we see the other one? Well, there's one there. There should be one over here somewhere. There it is. So those are the two front bolts. There's one, there's the other, and that's one in the back, and that one's in the back. And so these bolts that are holding this Briggs and Stratton engine down onto this John Deere tractor these have 15 millimeter heads. Okay. Well, that's the first one out of four. I can't see it at all. So this belt guide comes out with it, I see. You can probably grab under the SD oil filter. You can grab under there. Here. Yep. And grab the pipe. Pipes are going to pull right out of the muffler. Okay, so yeah. it's, it's not that heavy, I think. Oh, that's right. Not too bad. Okay. Right. Got it nice and easy here. Well, it's the next morning and I'm getting ready to start work on this gasket replacement. So to begin with, I'm just going to give the whole bottom of the sump a good wipe down. Try to clean up some of this goop that's on it. Get it nice and clean to the point that I can with a dry rag.
So I thought I had a bit of a problem here because my biggest puller, I have a three jaw puller here, as far down as it can reach, it still can't get under this pulley. And it seemed to be extremely tightly stuck on that shaft. So I didn't know what I was going to do. I was just kind of goofing around and I put these two boards under it and I thought, well, maybe I can somehow wedge under there. You don't want to use like a pry bar on the bottom of the case because you, you risk cracking the bottom of the case. It's only an aluminum casting. You can see it's loose there. So just for the heck of it, I put these boards under here and I just pried up. So I'm prying on the outer edge of the case and on the motor mounts. And I just, the first time I pried, the thing just popped right up. It actually flew off and landed on the floor. I wasn't expecting it to come off so easy. But I think, yeah, this is a tapered shaft. So once it's loose, it's loose. I wasn't expecting that, but that turned out to be a lot easier than I was expecting. And so actually, while I was trying to figure this out, I poured a bunch of uh, PB blaster on here, thinking that I didn't know how this was gonna come off. This is all one piece. So my PB blaster was totally ineffective. But if I were smarter, or if I knew more, I would have thread this in, like, so that those threads are already, are fully buried into the shaft. And then the space around, you can see there's a space there between the bolt and the inside of the, the hole in the shaft. Just fill that with PB blaster so that could soak down in between this and the shaft. And for some reason that would that might help you. For some reason, this thing is covered, well it's covered with motor oil, so that shouldn't be too much of a surprise, I guess. And uh, that's another good reason why I should be replacing this main seal. And I got a new one, so I will be replacing that. So I'm going to tackle this oil pump. I don't know if there's a good order to disassemble things. But I want to take care of this oil pump first. Because I think there's a shaft that can drop out when I lift the sump. So I'd rather pull it out ahead of time. This looks like somebody put a bunch of silicone sealant on the O-ring. Yep. That's an O-ring and uh, I'll have to see if it's in good shape or not. There's a little bit of, there's a little bit of wear on the cover. This is the part that contacts the oil pump. This is the oil pump. Wow, that magnet is actually strong enough. So that's one of the veins in the oil pump. Not sure if that's what it's called. I will find out though. This should lift out of here. There it goes. I'm 
going to put it down on here in the direction that it would be up against the top there. And this is the shaft I was wondering about. Seems like that should be removed first because it's going to drop inside when I lift the sump. So that's the oil pump all taken care of. For right now I'm going to put the cover back on. And I'll open it up again and clean it up better before I reinstall the sump. Time to disassemble this governor linkage from the shaft that goes internally to the motor. Fifty fifty. Once it's loose, it should just slide off. Once that's been loosened, it should just slide off, but it's, it needs a little help. So I'm gonna to try to spread these. It's kind of a pinch boss arrangement here. Just spread that out a little bit. I just need to tap this wedge in there a little bit to spread it out. Yep. And we're just going to leave that whole assembly assembled. We don't want to take that apart and have to try to figure out how it goes back together again later. Start taking these sump case bolts out. We're almost ready to lift this sump. Or drop it since we're upside down. We're going to drop it up. These bolts are all the same length and they come with a, with a Loctite, some type of a thread lock on them. And as, and as we saw when we looked at the parts I got, the head gasket, <laughs> the sump gasket comes with new bolts. So we're not reusing these. We'll keep them around. Might be able to reuse them on something else someday. They might be metric. Ah, the smell of engine case oil. So there's these blocks sticking out here on the case that I think are conveniently located try to break the seal between the sump 
And the top part of the motor case, engine case. It's definitely broken there. Here we go. It's important to be careful because what we're dealing with here is the crankshaft main bearing here and inside here. So we want to keep that especially clean. It does have a little, uh, it does have some wear marks and frankly circular scratch marks in it. That's not exciting. So this is the motor main bearing in here. So you need to be careful about not scratching or damaging that. Carefully start lifting this old gasket off. It mainly just seems to just pull right off. So it should be pretty easy to clean these surfaces. Another thing we want to check are these alignment pins. It's nice and snug in there. Nice and snug, a perfect fit. And then we also need to check it in the top, the top side. And that one is perfect. That one is fine as well. There's no play in that at all. It slides in and there's no play. I don't see how it could be more perfect. Pull this pin out just to get it out of my way over here. This gasket scraper is very old and it doesn't have a sharp edge on it, which I think is what you want in this case because you don't want to dig into that aluminum housing. A very sharp edge might cut into the surface. For example, using a razor blade, you have to be very careful. Not to dig in. I just want to get that, that fiber off of there from from the gasket, the remains of the gasket. And not to dig into the aluminum surface in the process. Oops. And don't put any crud down inside the engine. See, you can see how I'm getting up those fibers. Well, mostly not digging into the surface here. If you want to use an even extra level of gentle with a single edge razor, do it by hand then you can really feel what it's doing on the surface. I'm not trying to cut into that. I'm 
trying not to cut into it. I just want to remove the fibrous material of the gasket and whatever adhesive the gasket has on it. I think it's got some some adhesive on it. The new one seems to. The part of the engine that was leaking, let's see, the front. So this area here is where the leak was, right here. So I'll be extra careful and, and do a extra good job of cleaning those surfaces. Although all the surfaces have to be very well cleaned. So I'll just continue on with that now on the engine case and on the sump. And there's no need for you to watch all that. Thank you for watching. Please join me as I complete this job in part two.